Finding a new best buddy can occasionally make everything better. Mom had been anticipating this day for years, but when it finally arrived, she was shocked by the outcome. There are events in our kids' lives that we won't soon forget. They'll always be seared into our memories. Our infant is sitting up and rolling over. First word, first steps, and first bite of real food from our infant. The first day of preschool and kindergarten, which is emotionally charged. High school's last day of classes. Discovering that your once adorable baby is now an adult who's left the nest as you assist them in moving into their first apartment or college residence. However, not all parents go through the same traditional first that other parents do. Maybe their kids have a chronic illness or a handicap that makes it difficult for them to walk or speak clearly. One boy's unusual first made his mother cry. The young child, Kai, has been preparing for this occasion, this significant first, for the past two years. While tears ran down her cheeks, his mother, Shana Niehaus, took it all in. They're Americans who were expatriate residents of Japan, and they were in a desperate situation to find a service dog for the autistic son. It was a truly lovely day when this boy met his new dog. See this situation? I've never had a moment like this before. The expression of a mother who watched her child, who she's unable to hug, wash, dress, cuddle, or touch without restriction, lay on his new service dog of his own free will, with a deliberate, unspoken attachment captured in this photograph. This is the look of a mother who's watched her son make many unsuccessful attempts to make friends in the playground, whichever pale, any relationship at all, no matter how hard he tries or how hard he works in his autism therapies. She's spent months sitting with her son as he sobs at night since he has no reliable ties outside of the family. For him, it doesn't translate to the natural world. She's currently sitting behind her kid, observing this scene in silence while her lungs are being sucked dry. When it becomes too much, one mother battles to get her son the right resources, works tirelessly and compassionately through each diagnosis, meets with countless different teachers and providers, and continuously sobs. She wipes away her tears, gathers herself, and smiles at the adorable kid she has been blessed with, just like most other mothers do. They advance one step and then retreat two steps. They don't know what the future will bring. But they're aware that Kai has been provided the affection he so urgently needs at this very moment by a dog by the name of Tornado. I know everything will be well because of this, because of Tornado. As a mother, I have wept countless times and witnessed countless difficult, traumatic situations that my son has gone through. But yesterday I was crying for a different cause. It's an emotion that cannot be described. This young boy received Tornado through Four Paws for Ability, a company that specializes in raising and giving service dogs to children with impairments. This youngster sprang off his mother's lap and ran across the room as soon as he saw his dog. Watching him respond to him right away as he lay down and seeing that relationship return to him was breathtaking. He appears to be a lot happier and more fulfilled. Thanks to his new service dog, this little kid now has the chance to learn how to endure touch and eventually even appreciate affection. So even though he might not have experienced the same firsts as other children, his mother will always treasure this one special moment that was caught on camera. In another story, a cat helped transform how this girl with autism communicates. A family pet can provide comfort and countless hours of entertainment for many kids, but the acquisition of a family pet marked a turning point in the life of six-year-old Iris Grace. Iris, who has severe autism, was unable to speak for the first several years of her life. However, everything changed when her family made the decision to buy a cat. Arabella Carter Johnson, Iris's mother, who resides in Leicestershire, UK, wrote about her daughter's relationship with Thula, a pet cat, and the profound influence it had on her life. Iris's parents discovered that she was stuck in her own world, unreachable, prior to Thula. Iris rarely smiled or spoke, and she didn't glance up when her mother entered a room. Iris had trouble communicating with us before Thula entered our lives. Instead, Carter Johnson said, She mainly showed me what she wanted in a more physical way, pointing or taking me to things. Then, one day, the family made the decision to buy a cat. Iris's favorite lullaby inspired the name Thula. Iris felt an instant connection with Thula and started to be more open and talkative with her new friend than she ever had been. According to Carter Johnson, 
Iris started using her voice a lot more after Thula and is now glad to tell me what she would like to eat, watch, or do. Thula brought about a lot of change in our life. Iris had a very difficult time falling asleep, but things quickly changed. She would settle down in the evening and wake up early to visit her best friend. According to research, kids with autism who have household pets typically have better social skills. A 2012 study found that adding a pet to the family led to an increase in prosocial behavior in autistic youngsters. Intriguingly, the findings revealed that bonding was more common when pets were given to families as children rather than from birth. In Iris's instance, welcoming Thula into the family made her more content to ride in the car and made haircuts and bath time, which had previously been upsetting, much easier. Iris, who also detested wearing tops, resumed wearing clothing. It appeared as though her dependable partner was solving each problem individually, claims Carter Johnson. Thula would be there to reassure Iris if she woke up throughout the night. Thula observed Iris playing and occasionally joined in. Thula sat by Iris's side and imitated her actions as she played with Play-Doh while standing at her table. They felt at ease with one another right away, which was unique for Carter Johnson. I didn't have to do anything, which was a novelty, she adds. Soon after she came, Iris started talking to her and would say things like, more cat and sit cat, while giving her orders on what to do. Iris's mother observed the two developing a deep bond, which she referred to as a profound connection that we'd been looking for all this time. Carter Johnson observed that her daughter was petting Thula's paws and stroking her fur with increased fondness. Iris had been more fun and overtly affectionate with her father, PJ. She loved playing games and having fun with all the silly things we wanted to do with her for so long, recalls Carter Johnson. Iris started to chuckle when her grandfather hugged her. She would go over to him and grasp his hand to take him to an adventure in the garden. Previously, Iris had detested being hugged, kissed, or even talked to occasionally. After Thula entered our life, Carter Johnson added, it was like she was opening up to all of us. Iris is becoming more affectionate, and Carter Johnson notes that she's been hugging and kissing her buddy recently, which is unusual but serves as a sweet reminder of how much Iris values the friendship. The Applied Behavioral Analysis, ABA, treatment, stems back to a time when psychologists argued that autistic people lacked the capacity to readily comprehend social cues due to a deficit in empathy caused by structural differences in their brains. They may have too much empathy, and as a result, they find social interactions to be excessively noisy and terrifying, which causes them to withdraw from society. Today, there's a challenge to that assumption. Which one is correct? The response need to determine how treatment strategies are developed. There's a good chance that the Skinner strategy just works on the surface to elicit the answers that are intended, but that's not the least bit effective. There is some evidence that lends credence to the too much empathy idea. In general, autistic children and adults are able to socialize rather successfully with animals such as cats, dogs, and horses. When people interact with animals, they develop more advanced socializing abilities, which they're subsequently able to apply, at least to some extent, when interacting with other people. It would indicate that they feel less of a social danger from animals, which is to be expected given that animals typically love benevolent humans without conditions. If instead autistic people have a low capacity for empathy, then this outcome should be exceedingly unlikely to occur. You could get blind if there's too much light. You could lose your hearing if exposed to an excessive amount of noise. In addition, having an excessive amount of empathy may be the cause of autistic disengagement as well as the diminished ability to understand social cues. Before we should rush to give ABA therapy a green light, this question has to be resolved to everyone's satisfaction. It's appropriate to use healthy amounts of skepticism and critical thinking. Dr. Temple Grandin, who teaches animal science at the university level, could have some insights to provide regarding this connection. She explains in her paper titled Thinking the Way Animals Do how she finds that her autism makes it simpler for her to comprehend animal behavior because her thought processes are quite similar to that of an animal. She reveals that most of the time, rather than thinking in words, she thinks in pictures, much like an animal does. As a result of hearing once from a horse trainer that horses do not think but rather only make associations, she came to the conclusion that 
If making associations does not constitute thinking, then neither does she. It's true that people with autism frequently form strong links to unfavorable occurrences, which can lead to the development of unusual concerns. For example, the color red is frequently connected with unfavorable sentiments for people with autism. In conclusion, another similarity between autistic people and animals is that their predominant feeling is frequently dread. Both types of autistic individuals are frequently terrified by loud, high-pitched noises and are easily overwhelmed.